Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got another video of could an Iowa-class battleship have survived X. Uh, in this case, our video is could an Iowa-class battleship have survived Sorogawa Strait? And we're looking specifically at if we replaced Fuso and Yamashiro with Iowa-class battleships. Because, let me tell you, if it was an Iowa in place of a Pearl Harbor survivor on the uh, crossing the T side of the engagement, the answer is yes. Uh, short answer. Uh, this is a video that was recommended by one of our fans. So just as a reminder, if you're interested in seeing something in particular, let us know in the comment section down below. If you give us a donation, uh, odds are we will get to it as uh, much quicker than if it's just one of the ones we add to our list. We, we've got a list of ideas uh, going out well over a month at this point. Uh, and, uh, as always, because for some reason I need to remind people of this, why are we comparing would an Iowa have survived X engagement? Uh, it's because we have an Iowa-class battleship here. Uh, so, yeah, it would be more reasonable to compare Arizona or Tennessee to Fuso and Yamashiro. But uh, I don't have one of those. Nobody does. I do have USS New Jersey, though. So, it's the night of October 25th, 1944. Uh, a Japanese force, the Southern Force, is sailing through Saragawa Strait in the Southern Philippines. Because the American submarine campaign against Japan has been so effective, the Japanese Navy has to be distributed across the empire, uh, particularly to the south, where there's lots of fuel. So, uh, the Japanese fleet is not concentrated in one place like it should be for a naval battle. Uh, and so the Japanese come up with this really complex plan for a series of northern, central, southern, and then other additional forces to all converge on the um, eastern side of the Philippine Islands to attack the American invasion forces. Some of these forces are diversions, uh, and some of these forces are intended to meet up uh, at the exact same time. And they're going to try and do this all while under intense American observation from carrier aircraft and submarines and uh, in complete radio silence so they don't give away their position. Even though the American submarines and carrier aircraft uh, keep reasonably decent tabs on the Japanese. So uh, communication during this engagement is a huge problem, not just for the Japanese, but for the Americans. The Japanese Southern Force during the Battle of Saragawa Strait consists of two battleships, Fuso and Yamashiro. They're some of the older Japanese battleships. They are World War I era dreadnoughts, uh, each armed with uh, 12 14-inch guns in six twin turrets, and they've been heavily modernized during the interwar period, uh, but they still aren't frontline units by modern standards. They're escorted by the cruiser Mogami, perhaps the unluckiest ship of the Imperial Japanese Navy, uh, as well as a group of destroyers. Also nearby, a force of uh, Japanese heavy and light cruisers and destroyers uh, called the Second Attack Force is coming to meet up with the uh, Japanese battleships. Because of the lack of communication, these two forces should link up uh, throughout Sorogawa Strait to meet up with Kurita Center Force off Samar uh, the next day, uh, but they do not, and the cruiser force ends up entering Sorogawa Strait uh, about 25 miles behind the Japanese battleships, and so they're able to survive the engagement. Uh, they also don't contribute anything to the Japanese side of the engagement. This ends up being an extremely one-sided affair. While Halsey takes Third Fleet including the battleship New Jersey, on a run to the north chasing the Japanese northern force, which was just a decoy, Admiral Jesse Oldendorf, commanding the shore bombardment units assigned to 7th Fleet, uh, manages to get information about the Japanese fleet coming through Suragawa Strait and puts his fleet there. Five of his six battleships are Pearl Harbor survivors. West Virginia, Maryland, Tennessee, California, and Pennsylvania. The final battleship, Mississippi, 
is equally as old, but was in the Atlantic at the time. He also has four heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, 28 destroyers, 39 PT boats. Perhaps the biggest disparity is in guns. He has 48 14-inch guns and 16 16-inch guns at his disposal, 35 8-inch guns, 54 6-inch guns, uh, and I, forgive me, I didn't even do the math to count up all the 5-inch guns. Um, that, it's overkill at that point. Additionally, the Japanese ships had already been attacked by American carrier aircraft, and though uh, serious damage hadn't been done, both Japanese battleships had been hit and had taken on water already. As the Japanese battleships try to transit the Straits, they're first harassed by those 39 American PT boats. While the PT boats probably don't land any hits at this time, they are able to send spotting reports to uh, Admiral Oldendorf. Next up, the destroyers are set up in two lines so that they can fire their torpedoes into the Japanese battleship. Both battleships end up being hit by torpedoes, and Fuso, possibly after only one torpedo, uh, rolls over and sinks. Yamashiro continues on, and a short while later runs into the gun line Oldendorf has set up. With his cruisers and battleships blocking the strait, uh, they utterly bombard Yamashiro, uh, which fires her guns in all directions because she's practically surrounded at that point, uh, but she cannot effectively see her targets. And starting at an engagement range of, about, range of about 11 nautical miles, the American battleships pump shells into her until she rolls over and sinks. So, could New Jersey have done any better? Uh, I'm going to look at this two separate ways. One, if the two Iowa-class battleships sailing up the strait run into the American ships that were actually there. And then again, uh, running into comparable Japanese ships. So, uh, Iowa class battleships have a number of advantages over Fuso class battleships. Uh, for one, they have uh, bigger guns with 16 inch 50 caliber guns. And for two, their night fighting capabilities are significantly better because of their late war radar fire control. Uh, so, their fire control systems are equal to the best of the American battleships in the engagement and superior to half of the American battleships. Also, they're significantly faster and have significantly better armor plate. Uh, and, goes without saying, but they are three decades newer. Even with all these advantages, Iowa-class battleships have uh, almost 50% more crew, and I suspect that means they would suffer significantly more casualties than actually happened in the engagement. Each Fuso and Yamashiro uh, had a crew of around 1,500, uh, and only 10 members of each crew survived, so 20 total people out of 3,000 battleship sailors. Uh, in exchange, they did zero damage to the American fleet, and only one destroyer was damaged by friendly fire. Uh, zero damage isn't True, they, they did damage and drive off some PT boats, uh, and they might have done insignificant damage to other ships, but they weren't able to sink a single one. Um, the number of ships involved in this engagement means that uh, the Iowas would still be overwhelmed. Uh, they have a number of fire control directors and computers and could aim their guns at multiple targets. And with the radar, they might even be scoring hits on some of these uh, destroyers and PT boats that are attacking them in the night. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be enough to drive them all off, and they will take torpedo hits. They're very long ships, and even though they're relatively uh, maneuverable, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of room in Suragawa Strait to maneuver. And they're probably just trying to force their way through the strait at uh, a pretty decent speed. Not only could they do it better speed than uh, Fuso and Yamashiro, they've got twice the range, so assuming the Empire has enough fuel for them, uh, they could probably force the strait at a significantly faster speed uh, than Fuso and Yamashiro actually attempted. Uh, when it comes to the engagement with the battleships, I suspect both 
American battleships could survive to that point, uh, but then against the radar fire control of the uh, American battleships, they would be taking significant hits. Uh, they could dish out punishment as well. Uh, they may have the chance to hit targets. West Virginia is said to have hit Yamashiro on her very first salvo using radar alone. Uh, so the Iowas with the same radar fire control uh, have the chance of doing the same. They are only able to bring two-thirds of their guns to bear on the enemy which is better than Fuso and Yamashiro, which could only bring one-third of their guns to bear. As earlier dreadnought-type battleships, uh, some of their guns are midships and can fire neither forward nor aft, only broadside. Uh, so maybe an Iowa can score some hits. And the super heavy shells they're firing may well even be able to sink some of the 14-inch armed battleships in one hit. Um, but after taking a couple of hits, from the massed firepower of Oldendorf's line, they're going to be very badly shot to pieces, and um, that's going to seriously degrade their combat capabilities. Uh, early hits would probably knock out radar and fire control directors, and once the guns are under local control, they, they can still operate, and they're at close enough range that they can theoretically engage the target, but uh, it's shooting fish in a barrel at that point. Maybe in this scenario, our Iowas can turn around and run. Um, the Japanese had some issues with this in the battle. Some of their cruisers and destroyers did uh, and were so badly damaged they sunk along the way. Uh, one, the uh, cruiser Mogami turned around and made it out only to ram one of the cruisers in the oncoming uh, second attack force before all of the ships attempted to turn around and leave. Uh, the Japanese ships in the second attack force survived, made it back to port, and then were sunk in dry dock while they were getting repairs. Uh, Mogami was so badly damaged by the collision that she was sunk by American carrier aircraft the next day. Uh, so the Iowas may be able to turn around and run, uh, likely not at that range. They, they'd still be under fire for too long. And even if they did, uh, even with radar and being on fire so everybody can see where you are, these ships were still running into each other in the narrow straits at night. Uh, so, same token, let's say Iowa and New Jersey are trying to force a strait and uh, a series of Japanese battleships are blocking their path. Nagato and Mutsu are roughly equivalent to West Virginia and Maryland, and Fuso, Yamashiro, uh, Hayuga, and Ise are pretty comparable to Mississippi, Tennessee, California, and Pennsylvania. Uh, so if these ships and the force of Japanese cruisers and destroyers are blocking the strait when the American forces try to come in. The battle might go differently, honestly. Uh, the Japanese do have radar, but it's nowhere near as effective as the American radar. And the uh, surface search sets aren't working too well. Uh, the gunnery sets are doing okay, but the surface search sets, uh, because there are so many islands in the Philippine Islands, are getting all sorts of cluttered returns. Uh, so really, it's the visual spotting that the destroyers and PT boats are doing that is uh, enabling Oldendorf to control the battle. Uh, so in this hypothetical, um, the Japanese may not have that. Um, they would probably spread their forces out the same way. It's, it's fairly textbook. Uh, and they do have superior nighttime optics and uh, although early in the war they had superior nighttime training, by this point in the war it's pretty equivalent. Uh, so they may have been able to see the American battleships, uh, in which case their destroyers would launch torpedo spreads. The Long Lance is still absolutely deadly. Uh, and while the Iowa class's torpedo defense is okay against American torpedoes, the Long Lance has a larger warhead and may be able to do more damage uh, and defeat the American torpedo defense. Uh, so, these American battleships would probably take damage on the way in, just like their Japanese counterparts. Uh, the question at that point is, do they still try to force the strait, or do they turn around and run? Because they do have the speed to turn around and run. Uh, if we're considering a similar situation, and they feel they must force the strait, 
Um, they may well be able to get off the first shots in the battle, engaging the uh, Japanese battleships. And they may well be able to do significant damage to a couple, but six against two, especially with those six crossing your T, um, is going to be a lot of trouble. Plus, American heavy cruisers do not have torpedoes. Japanese heavy cruisers have lots of torpedoes. So likely that would play a role in the action too. And the American ships are coming up the straight, straight at you. Um, so your, your Japanese cruisers crossing the T can just fire those torpedoes right down the slot. Uh, and you're likely going to catch those ships on the bow. And then that's going to cause them to take on a fair amount of water up forward and really severely reduce their speeds. And then you got them. It's just a matter of uh, finishing them off. So. In conclusion, Iowa-class battleships might be able to put up a better showing. They've got better technology and they're significantly newer, but I don't, I, I cannot imagine a scenario in which Iowa-class battleships are able to force Surigawa straight. The odds are just too much against them. If you start talking about, well, what if it's two Iowas versus two Yamatos, well, hey, now, now we're coming up on a fair fight. Um, but w with the huge disparity in firepower, it's not a winnable scenario. Surigawa Strait is significant because it is the last time in history serious naval forces engage each other in a gunfight. It's the last time battleships engage in a gunfight. It's the last time any ships cross the enemy's T. Following World War II with the invention of missiles, that strategy goes out the window entirely and there just aren't any naval battles after World War II. You got a couple of things, uh, Operation Praying Mantis, American missile ships sink an, Iraq, or an Iranian frigate, uh, the Falklands Wars are pretty one-sided, uh, so you don't have a traditional stand-up naval battle again. Mississippi firing the last salvo of the battle and the last salvo of a battleship against another battleship closes out the end of an era. What do you think? Do you disagree with me that Niowa could survive Surigawa Strait? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also let us know what other battles you'd like to see us cover in this way. Uh, we've talked about things like Bismarck, Yamato, Surigawa Strait now. Are you interested in seeing if New Jersey could survive what sank Scharnhorst or other engagements like that? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other uh, businesses and individuals like yourselves. The support you guys have given us has really blown us out of the water and we appreciate it. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue to support us that way. And you can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.